Professor uh, Li Junhao of the Global Undergraduate Program uh, in Semiconductors at uh, National Taiwan University. Thanks for joining us on the show this morning. We wanted to ask you about your program. It's a bit more than half a year old now, I think. Uh, so yeah, tell us, what, what's, what's the, the program in semiconductors? What's special about it? So actually, we accumulate the resources in NTU, National Taiwan University, from different colleges. Uh, for example, College of the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and also the GSET, Graduate School of Advanced Technology, and also the College of Science, College of Engineering, so many colleges and uh, we collect the uh, resources about the semiconductor and uh, to form this uh, GUPS. So that is the first thing. Actually, we accumulate the resources from different colleges about semiconductor for the curriculum. And the second thing is our student body. In this course, they are specially designed for the international student and overseas Chinese. So because those are international students, so we use uh, all English courses. So about that global undergraduate program, right? So how many of the students right now are actually coming from abroad? And mm -hmm. uh, are there Taiwanese students in the program as well? In the coming September, uh, we will have 40 students. Mm. And about 20, half of them, they are overseas Chinese. Half of them, they are international students. And I think majority, they come from the Indonesia, Vietnam, and also Thailand. Macau and uh, this country, and also the, uh, from the United States and uh, France. Mm -hmm. And why, why an international program? Why actually did, did NTU decide to uh, start this international interdisciplinary pro uh, program? To have this kind of industry, we think the talent cultivation is the most important thing. Uh, if you have money, you can buy equipment, you can, do, you can have the fab, but you need the people. People mm -hmm. is the most important thing. So we think in the future, uh, we should cultivate global talents in semiconductor. So that is the major goal. So think about that uh, when we recruit the international student, when they come to Taiwan and uh, they learn in Taiwan. So maybe they can stay in Taiwan because uh, Taiwan have, uh, we have a very complete ecosystem in semiconductor. So that's one choice. The second choice, maybe they can go back to their home country. Yeah, and help them to develop semiconductor. But they will say, oh, okay, I have the Taiwan experience, so they can collaborate with Taiwan. So that's also helpful to, for Taiwan. And also, we can think about this international student, they can come to Taiwan and go to other country. So that is also helpful to establish the global supply chain in semiconductor. Uh, that is uh, beneficial to Taiwan. Right, so whether, whether students stay here or actually go back home, it will benefit kind of Taiwan's position in semiconductors. Yes, yes. So, when the play phone phones, and uh, it's, it's about 1990, and uh, actually we attract global talent to Taiwan. But they are overseas Chinese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, they form this kind of the uh, semiconductor industry in Taiwan. And think about that in the future, maybe 10 year, 20 year, and different uh, countries they have their uh, semiconductor industry, but there's no Taiwan-related talents there. So Taiwan has no roles in that. Mm -hmm. So our idea is we can help to cultivate talents. So that's why we use the uh, old English courses to attract international students. So in the future, they will go to different places and they will think about, oh, something I can collaborate with Taiwan or something we can put in Taiwan that's easier, is cheaper, and we can have a better yield. So why not? It's a good choice to, to collaborate with Taiwan. So is there actually industry demand? Is, is, was the program actually founded due to industry demand? Or where, where did the demand come from? And is there industry support for the program? Uh -huh. This program, actually, we receive some funding from industry. Right now, for the, for the education uh, in Taiwan universities, that is one important goal. Before we think that to achieve the excellence in research, that is its only goal. But actually we need to think about the career, the student's future career. That is also very important. Not every student there will go become the professor. So we need to train the qualified uh, engineers, leaders, not only in the academic field, but also in the industry. 
So I think that is the role uh, we need to think about. And does it have anything to do with how uh, several Taiwanese companies have been investing more abroad? Of course, most notably TSMC, uh, and are going to have a more kind of diverse workforce and be based in more locations. Is that one of the reasons why, why this kind of program has come about? We think that after the education, then the student, they will know more about the Taiwan. So no matter where they are, no matter what kind of the job they are doing, but they will think about Taiwan and they will be the ambassador of Taiwan. So that's what we are thinking. Yeah. So traditionally, semiconductor engineers, they, you know, they tend to come from electrical engineering, material science, physics backgrounds, uh -huh. uh, kind of classical engineering fields. And um, what's different about a program like GOPS, academically speaking? Okay, so actually for the uh, four-year program, uh, I mean the four-year undergraduate program, for the first year, typically there are some, for the STEM student, typically they take some calculus or physics or chemistry, something like that. Also that is a basic one. And for the second year, we call that as core courses. So they will design the core courses of this department. So we pick up the uh, pillars from different departments related to semiconductors and to form this program. So that is the second year. So after the second year, they will know about, uh, for example, semiconductor materials, semiconductor devices, semiconductor integrated circuit design, and also the device physics. Then for the third year, and they can go to the uh, different uh, spatial uh, programs. So your program is kind of a more efficient place to kind of start immediately on studying semiconductors and what you need specifically for, for that kind of job. But is there any, anything that you would be missing if you study this program? Um, does it restrict your ability to do other things in the future? Uh, I think the uh, science is, does not change. Yeah, maybe the technology, that, that will change. So in this program, we focus on science. Yeah, so GUPS, that says everything about a semiconductor. So, for example, if you want to solve one problem and you have different approaches, so we focus on uh, develop the ability to become an engineer to solve the problem. Yeah, so we will focus on some core technologies. And in the future, uh, one example is right now we say, we say that is an AI era, or uh, some people say, oh, it's the iPhone time of AI. So that would be 10 years, 20 year, golden age of AI. But in the future, that may be the quantum. Maybe the quantum, maybe we don't know yeah, because uh, it's a possibility. But we will train our students. Oh, you know something about that. And uh, you can use your experience you learn right now to solve the problem in the future. What future technologies, subjects the students need to learn today to be ready for the future? of semiconductors? Yeah, it's also a very good question. So the, for the future technology, typically uh, we will put on the third year or fourth year and there are some elective courses. So one important question is, uh, for example, uh, right now uh, for the AI technology, because the speed is become uh, faster and faster and the data, uh, we need a lot of data uh, transmission and receiving. So that's why we need a, a process unit, a very good. Um, and also we need a high bandwidth memory. And between them, we need uh, lots of the uh, interconnect. So interconnect can be electrical or optical. So optical in interconnect, or we call the silicon photonics, that become a very popular one. And also we need to integrate many things together. So that is the packaging. So for example, COAS or other technology is very important. But um, I want to emphasize is actually that is undergraduate program. So for the undergraduate program, we need to teach students something unchanged for the, for the 10 year, 20 year, 30 year. So that is science. Science doesn't change. But we, we train the engineer, okay? So if you know the science and you know the limitation of the, of the technology, then if the, this technology, for example, the electrical interconnect, there's a bottleneck, 
uh, if you go up to the 800 giga or 1.6 tera gigahertz, so that will be the bottleneck. So they can calculate, oh, from the science, it's very difficult, maybe possible, but difficult. So maybe at this moment, we can change to the optical interconnect. So photonics way, photon silicon photonics. So I want to uh, equip the student, they have the ability to do this kind of the uh, mindset. But if you go to the technology, that change very fast. The other thing is, for example, material. For the material, we want to down to the seven nanometer to five nanometer to three nanometer to two nanometer, then 1.8, then 1.4. Then students need to know what's the limitation in the future. Then, then that is one thing. What is the bottleneck? Then what is the solution? So that's how we train the engineer. So for the future duration, of course, uh, there are lots of the choices uh, from the material side, from the system side, many things we can do. But uh, I think the, for, uh, for the undergraduate program student, you need to know the basic science right now. Then you can decide what you want to do in the future. Mm -hmm.